Hey everybody, in this video, we're going to be learning about the squeeze theorem. Here's what the squeeze theorem says. If f of x is less than or equal to g of x, which is less than or equal to h of x, and the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l, and the limit of h of x as x approaches c equals l, then the limit of g of x as x approaches c also equals l. Because g of x is always between f of x and h of x, it's as if the limit of g of x as x approaches c is squeezed to l. Here's a graphical illustration of how this works. Since the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 equals 1, and the limit of h of x as x approaches 0 also equals 1, and g of x is always in between f of x and h of x, then the limit of g of x as x approaches 0 is also equal to 1 by the squeeze theorem. Since g of x is sandwiched in between f of x and h of x, its limit will also be 1 as x approaches 0. Now the reason that we use the squeeze theorem is typically because we're trying to find the limit of a complicated function by comparing it to two other functions whose limits are easier to calculate. Let's do an example problem. Suppose we want to find the limit as x approaches 0 of the function x squared times sine of 4 over x. The first thing to notice is that sine of 4 over x is always greater or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 1. If we multiply this entire inequality by x squared, we get negative x squared is less than or equal to x squared times sine of 4 over x, which is less than or equal to x squared. Now what we're going to do is take the limit of negative x squared as x approaches 0 and the limit of x squared as x approaches 0. And we can see that these limits are both 0. And consequently, since x squared sine of 4 over x is in between negative x squared and positive x squared, it means that its limit as x approaches 0 also has to be 0 by the squeeze theorem. Let's take a look at this graphically. The two blue functions are x squared and negative x squared. The green function is x squared times sine of 4 over x. As you can see, the green function is always kept between the blue functions. And as x approaches 0, the green function is squeezed to 0 as well. Let's do another example. Find the limit of sine x over x as x approaches infinity. The first thing to notice here is that sine x is always greater or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 1. Now, let's multiply every term in this inequality by 1 over x. That gives us negative 1 over x is less than or equal to sine x over x, which is less than or equal to 1 over x. Now what we'll do is find the limit as x goes to infinity of negative 1 over x and the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. And both of those are 0. Therefore, by the squeeze theorem, the limit of sine x over x as x approaches infinity is also 0. Graphically, we can observe this as well. The red functions are 1 over x and negative 1 over x. The green function is sine x over x. As x approaches infinity, you can see that the function is approaching 0. Let's do one more example. Find the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared minus 2 cosine 2x, all divided by 5x squared minus 2. Hmm, this one's a little trickier. Let's break it down. The first thing to notice is that negative 2 cosine 2x is always greater or equal to negative 2 and less than or equal to 2. Now, let's add 3x squared to every term in this inequality. Then, let's divide every term by 5x squared minus 2. Now, we can take the limit of the left function and the limit of the right function as x approaches infinity and we can see that these are both 3 over 5 by using rules for limits at infinity of rational functions. Therefore, the limit of the middle function, 3x squared minus 2 cosine 2x all over 5x squared minus 2, 
is also equal to 3 over 5 by the squeeze theorem. We can observe this graphically as well. The green function is the function that we were trying to find the limit of as x goes to infinity. 3x squared minus 2 cosine 2x all over 5x squared minus 2. As you can see, it's trapped in between the purple and blue functions, which all approach a horizontal asymptote. And that asymptote is y equals 3 over 5. Well, that's it for now. I hope you've learned how to apply the squeeze theorem in various situations. Just keep on practicing. And that's how you rock calculus! <laughs>